How's it going guys? Um, pulling the, uh, the A29 apart here to, to uh, give it a bit of a clean. We come across a broken clutch spring. So we got it back together. Went to went down to the dealership, got the, the parts we need. So I figured I'd bring you along while I swap those out. It's a relatively simple process. You don't need any special tools. Screwdriver, pair of pliers. Preferably a good set of uh, good quality needle nose pliers. Other than that, all you need is a chainsaw tool. This off here. Shouldn't take any more than 5 or 10 minutes here. I'm curious to see, because this chainsaw has broken a spring before, I'm curious to see if it's the same spring. Take our screwdriver here and remove the e-clip. You always want to brace it with your finger because otherwise you'll end up losing it across the room. Stainless steel washer. Okay. Right, I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but it's this bad boy here. Alright. So she's broken off right on the hook there. It should look just like the other side. Alright, so when you replace springs you always want to replace them in sets. So we got the parts here. I'll just uh, you don't need to watch me swap that out fifty odd times. But um, I'll do the first one for you here just to show you the way I do it. I'll get the body bag open. Yeah. Alright. A bit of a difference in the springs here. That's fine. <coughs> it's always good to take the time to double check parts like this to make sure they're the right ones. Just makes life a lot easier. Just in case. That way you don't install them, find they're the wrong part. And yeah. It's fine. So with the two hooks and the two corresponding holes in the, the clutch clutch pieces, just want to put it in the first one. And use your pliers. You want to be very careful not to stretch these too much because you know, they're springs, they need the tension. So you want to get a firm hold of it, you have to brace the clutch because otherwise it will spin. And then pull it. It may take a few tries to get it in. Like that. Right. Try that again. And we'll just pull it until it fits in. Make sure you get a good spot on the spring to hold it so you can get some decent grip. And there we go. And once it's in, just give it a push. Make sure the hook goes all the way around and locks in properly. It's not just sitting on the top. Oop, and there's the roller bearing. Alright, I'll swap out the other two. And we'll get back to you here. We're all done here. Um, it's a good idea to hang on to the old ones. I'll hang on to these and keep them in the, uh, the go box or the toolbox. Um, if you bust one out in the field, you can swap one out temporarily to finish off your work day, but again, you should always replace them in sets and threes. Alright, so we'll get our clutch driver back, clutch driver, wow, yeah, clutch drum back on here. Now, you always want to spin it until it drops down. There's a, a notch in the clutch drum here, there's also the receiver down in past the clutch, but you don't really need to spend the time looking for it. If you just sit it on and give it a spin, it'll drop down. And you want to make sure that you've got enough room once the washer goes on to, uh, to get the e-clip in. Now, to install the e-clip, 
I've seen a lot of different methods. I've seen people push them on with screwdrivers. You get it here and they'll push with the screwdriver. I don't like that. I've had stitches because of that. Um, some people will use a needle nose plier to do it. I prefer to use a fencing plier because of the wider jaws it gives you a bit more surface area to grab onto and it's less likely to slip. So just take it nice and easy a nice gentle squeeze and it should go in. Right, I've just brought you in close here just to show you something. With the E-clip, which is this part here, you want to make sure that you have three points in. So you should have two on each end and then one right in the middle that all should fit into the groove. You want to make sure that's in and it doesn't sit out because I've done it myself personally and it never really ends well. So you just want to make sure you have your three points and you'll be good to go. So we're all done. Can get the bar and chain back on here. I don't really need to explain this process, it's fairly simple. Some people like to put the, the bar on first and then the chain. Some people like to put it all on as one unit like this. It doesn't really matter. As long as it gets on there and it's on there properly. Some people think different ways take a shorter amount of time. Good for them. <laughs> anyway, if you think the way you do it gives you an advantage, you go for it. This is just the way I do it. I, I do it different ways, you know. So, you know, it's, it's no big deal. Um, with the bar nuts as well, just a quick tip here. They do have small, they've got little small drawings on them, usually the steel logo and something to do with the, the steel that the nuts are made of. You want to make sure those face out. Just, that's the way they're designed to go on. They will go on the other way, but you know, it's just, and you want to be careful about cross threading them as well. So, they will go on the other way, but um, it's best to just put them on the way the manufacturer recommends. Yeah. Right, so I'm not going to make a video right now on chain tension, or even at all. Um, that's a minefield. Everybody has their own ways of doing it. Good for them. I do it the way I've been taught. That's much too tight. <laughs> like that. Um, I do it the way I've been taught. That's the way I do it. If you don't want to do it that way, you don't do it that way. That's just... Everybody has different opinions on... Especially chain tension. You know, you don't want to be... Diving into that with our combat pay. So, I'm just going to leave that one alone, I think. Alright, so that's enough. That's enough tension for me. I'm good. Alright, so that's it. That's a nice and simple process. Doesn't take too long. Save yourself some money, do it yourself. You know, there's a lot of things you can do on the saw yourself. But, um,. There's still a hell of a lot of stuff I would leave to a, a professional licensed mechanic. There's some stuff is just not worth the risk, especially if you're not proficient or mechanically inclined with that sort of stuff. Alright, thanks for watching guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.